When so, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is, we've done it. Hello and welcome to Stories of Success, a new YouTube channel that aims to tell the life stories of entrepreneurs and innovators from the first idea to the first million. This episode will be focused around Elon Musk, the inspirational innovator that has revolutionized several industries from online banking to rockets to electric cars. In less than three decades in business, Musk has amassed a net worth of over $15 billion and every day brings the human race a little closer to Mars. How did Elon Musk become so successful? That's what we're going to find out on today's episode of Stories of Success. Elon Reeve Musk was born on June 28, 1971 in Pretoria, South Africa, into a wealthy family. His mother was a model and nutritionist and his father was an engineer, an area which Elon took interest in. His early age passions were video games and reading. I read everything I could get my hands on from when I woke up to when I went to sleep. At one point I got, I really ran out of books and started reading the encyclopedia. That, combined with his photographic memory, turned him into a young fact machine eager to impart his knowledge on the world. The only problem is that he came across as a nerd and a know-it-all, which didn't win him many friends in the athleticism-dominated South Africa of the time. He was bullied mercilessly in his early teens. At one point, the bullying was so bad that he ended up in hospital, having been kicked down the stairs and beaten by a gang of thugs. With a bullying and semi-abusive father, it's safe to say Elon had a very tough childhood. Refusing to let the bullies get to him, Elon continued to read, learn, and create a vision for a better life for himself. From an early age, he dreamed of traveling to America, the land of opportunity in his eyes, and escaping the oppressive South Africa. He also took a special interest in computers, which he first became aware of when he was 10. Elon went full nerd mode with the programming course, or as he said it himself, it was supposed to take like six months to get through all the lessons. I just got super OCD'd on it and stayed up for three days with no sleep and did the entire thing. Around this time, Elon began to believe that the human race had to become an interplanetary species, perhaps taking his inspiration from his comics or his favorite book. This would go on to become his self-described life task and the reason he founded SpaceX. Despite his nerdy tendencies, Elon and his brother Kimball quietly showed entrepreneurial flair throughout their teenage years. Elon coded a video game called Blastar when he was only 12 and sold the code to a local gaming magazine for $500. He and Kimball also went door to door in their mid-teens selling easter eggs to their well-off neighborhood. However, perhaps their most outlandish venture was their attempt to open a video game arcade in their hometown of Pretoria. Elon, Kimball, and their cousins got the idea, chose location, got a lease, and began navigating the permit process for the business. They hit a snag, however, when they needed someone over the age of 18 to sign a legal document, and both parents refused to do it. Elon Musk didn't create his first proper business until he was 24 and living in America, although there are plenty of interesting things that happened between his 17th and 24th birthdays, starting with him basically packing up his things and moving to Canada alone at age 17. After arrival, he found out that the relatives he intended on staying with no longer actually lived in Canada, so he had to travel cross-country and work an assortment of difficult odd jobs before he found his way to Ontario where he enrolled at the University of Queens. After a few years, he would transfer to the University of Pennsylvania, where he received a dual degree in economics and physics. In their late teens, Elon, and now his brother Kimball who joined them, took turns cold calling people they thought they liked to get to know. One of these people was a man called Peter Nicholson, who was a senior executive at the Bank of Nova Scotia in Canada, who admired their productivity and agreed to meet with them. Nicholson would go on to offer them a summer internship at the bank and became a key advisor to Musk and a mentor in the early days of PayPal. Being proactive pays off. Another story from his time there. While he was at Penn, he and his more outgoing flatmate lived in a large unrented frat house. They would study during the week, but the weekends the house became the destination for college parties of up to 500 people. By charging $5 a head, they could make an entire month's rent in just one night. Elon was never a big drinker, but the parties provided an excellent way for him to help pay his way through college. After graduating, Elon interned in a few startups and secured a scholarship to Stanford in order to investigate the battery technology he was so intrigued by, although he decided to defer after just two days in favor of another venture. In short, the Musk brothers had fallen in love with Silicon Valley and the future potential of a brand new technology called the internet. I really wanted to just kind of go where, where the really exciting breakthroughs were occurring. In early 1995, the Musk brothers created a web startup called Global Link Information Network, which would later be renamed to the more catchy Zip2. 
The idea of the company was to allow local businesses to get online for the first time by putting their location and direction to their business on the internet. What they were mainly trying to create was something of a Google Maps meets Yelp, or as they were thinking of at the time, a way to bring the yellow pages online. Elon handled the coding and software side of the business, while Kimball took the sales side, with the job of convincing local businesses that the internet advertising was going to be the next big thing. This is where Elon went into relentless startup mode. He and his brother would literally work like 14 to 20 hours a day. Kimball had liquidated part of his franchise in a painting business in order to give them initial funds, but after buying a tiny office and furniture, they couldn't even afford an actual apartment for themselves. They ended up sleeping on cushions and beanbags in the office and taking showers at the local YMCA for the first few months. He also phoned up Navtech and asked them to use their GPS mapping service that they had spent millions developing, and they allowed him to use it. For free. If you don't ask, you don't get, I guess. Must then licensed some information for a business directory in the Bay Area and wrote some code bringing the programs together. Suddenly, Zip2 had a product, and it was up to Kimball to sell advertising on it to local businesses door to door. Zip2 began hiring towards the end of 1995, or bringing in more salespeople. It was up to Kimball to motivate the sales team despite very few customers. An early hire said about him, Kimball was the eternal optimist and he was very, very uplifting. I never met anyone quite like him. Elon continued to do his possessed programmer thing, spending time by his desk. The same hire said about Elon, almost every day I'd come in at 7.30 or 8 and he'd be asleep on the beam by beside his desk. I'd poke him and he'd just go straight back to work. There's no doubt about Elon Kimball that they made a great team and complement each other's flaws like all good founders should. The business continued to struggle along. One day the salesman came in with checks amounting to $900 and asked the must what to do with them. Elon leaned out behind his monitor and exclaimed, No way! You've got money?! In early 1996, the Musk brothers managed to raise $3 million in venture capital for the business, which was officially renamed to Zip2. They learned everything on the fly, initially not understanding how venture capital worked in Silicon Valley and asking for just 10k for 25% of their business. Using the VC money, Zip2 moved offices, hired engineers and salespeople and began to expand quickly. Along with the name change, the investors repositioned Elon from CEO to Chief Technology Officer and changed their business strategy to license the software to newspapers as a quick way for them to get online. Zip2 continued to grow as the internet and dot-com bubble expanded, until February of 1999 when Compact bought them out for $307 million in cash and $34 million in stock options. Musk earned $22 million in the deal, making him a multi-millionaire at just 27. And receiving cash is cash. I mean, those are just a large number of Ben Franklins. All that being said, Elon wasn't happy with slightly altering the course of newspaper history. He wanted to create something that would truly change the world. Enter PayPal. As soon as Elon heard Zip2 was likely going to be sold, he began looking for another industry that he felt could be revolutionized by the internet. Having spent a summer interning at a Canadian bank, he felt that finance was an industry that could easily lend itself to the internet. Money is essentially entries in a database and therefore low bandwidth. He was right and wrong. Finance can certainly be moved online, but it wouldn't be easy. Elon took some of the best talent from Zip2 and founded X.com, offering a number of banking services online and putting up $12 million of his newly acquired fortune. The only problem was that there was literally thousands of laws and regulations put in place to stop what X.com was trying to create. Elon did his typical thing, refused to take no for an answer and worked ridiculously hard. Eventually the team did overcome the regulatory hell required to become an online bank and they launched in late 1999 with the offer of $20 for everyone that signed up and $10 for getting your friend to sign up. They were instantly successful with 200,000 signups by the year 2000, but unsurprisingly they were also hemorrhaging money. X.com was competing with Confinity, another financial startup, for the same customers and both were on a path to self-destruction by trying to outspend each other. They realised they'd be doing better fighting for the same team and ended up merging in March of 2000. There was some fallout after the merger, which actually resulted in Elon getting ousted from X.com and PayPal as a result of a power struggle. Despite the underhanded nature of the removal, Elon handled the situation very well. He spoke to Peter Thiel who was the new CEO and found out they shared a lot of the same visions for their company. From that point on, Elon remained an investor and advisor to it and kept all of his shares. They made the decision to focus on their PayPal service at the end of 2000 and took the company public in 2002 despite the burst of the dot-com bubble. In October, eBay formally bought PayPal for $1.5 billion, netting Musk $180 million after tax as the largest shareholder. Musk now had enough money to do whatever he wanted and chase his wildest fantasies. 
And that's exactly what he did. Much of the rest of the story you probably already know, but if you'd like to learn more about Elon's life so far, I'd recommend picking up Ashley Vance's biography, which informs much of this video. I'll leave a link in the description to it if you'd like to check it out. In the future, I'd like to release another video on the early days of Tesla and SpaceX, as there's a lot of other incredible tales that need to be told. For now though, this has been the Elon Musk story, from his first ideas to his first million. I'll be doing more videos in this series, telling the inspiring stories of entrepreneurs before anyone knew who they were. I previously covered my eyes on Richard Branson, and I'm always open to suggestions for whose story to tell next, so feel free to leave a comment with suggestions. Keep hustling guys, and hopefully one day I'll be telling your tale on Stories of Success. What the hell with barriers? Touch! Jump over the barriers! Jump over! Thank you for coming! Thanks!